first of all, you should extract your XAMPP folder and start up the XAMPP control. So once it's starting, you would want to start up the Tomcat server. Once it's started, it will let you know where, what the port is. So over here, you'll see that it's hosted on port 8080. So let's just go right ahead and type that into our search bar. So once it's started, you'll see the Tomcat server over here at port 8080. Uh, the next thing you would want to do is that you want to browse to the Tomcat folder within the XAMPP folder and then you go to web apps and there you'll find the SDAFA folder. Okay, so over here you have all the examples and what you can do is if you're using VS Code like me, what you can do is you can load the whole folder into VS Code. So then you can like go through all these examples one by one. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can go through these examples all one by one and I'll just show you how to access them without using Eclipse. So you go to your server, you type forward slash, you type SDAFA2022, then you type whichever example folder you want to use, so 06, 07, 08. So you go to, let's say, 06. Then you can select whichever example you want to run. So let's say we want to run example number six, which is for, which is the for loop example. So let's just go and write ex06.jsp and that will run the for loop example for you. So over here in this example, we have a loop that increases the font size and adds like prints the updated font size. So the same thing is being printed thrice in different font sizes over here. So this is just to show you an example of the for loop. Similarly, if you want to open up some example from the example number seven folder, you will go over here, you will type 07 and then example 01. So now this one would open up the example for the folder number seven. And you can also try editing this stuff and just um, practicing to see what changes result in what things. Okay, so this is how you would run it with XAMPP. Uh, similarly, if you would want to do your assignment with without Eclipse, then you would add your document, your JSP file into your web apps folder. You can either add it directly to the web apps folder or you can make a new folder for assignment and add the files to it. So let's say you would want to put the new JSP file over here. Then if you needed to access that, you will have to change your URL so instead of SDA FA22, you would be typing assignment assignments because I made the folder name be assignments. So you'd be like slash, forward slash assignments and then your JSP file name. So we'll explain how to do it on Eclipse also. So let's just close Visual Studio Code. Okay, so one thing you want to make sure is that uh, XAMPP is only working on one um, uh, of the applications. So either through here, oh, sorry, not XAMPP, Tomcat server. So you need to stop this, otherwise it won't start on Eclipse. 
So let's just close this and go to Eclipse. So for me, I already have the Tomcat server added to it, but I'll remove it and I'll show you how to add it. So currently I've removed it from over here and I'll have to click this in order to add the server. So before we actually do that, so let me just tell you what you need. So let's just quickly go to the marketplace. So once you're in the marketplace, um, you would want to search for Enterprise or Eclipse Enterprise. So let's just give it a second. All right, so I'll just write enterprise over here. Okay, now see, see this is already installed for me, but you'll need to install this. And after that, you'll be able to switch to your JEE perspective. And you can do that by going to window and then you go to show view, show perspective and then you open the perspective and then you go to other and then you'll find the Java EE perspective. You need to open that perspective and then you'll see that it pops up all the tabs that are needed for this perspective. Let's just minimize that. You'll have a service tab over here. So since I removed the server, there isn't any over here right now. So let's just go and create a new server. So I'll, uh, since I have Tomcat version 9, I'll be using the version 9 one. But if you have a version 10 one, you'll need to select the version 10 one. Or if you have any other, you'll have to select it from here. So. So I'm going to go next. So if you haven't installed, uh, if you haven't done the configuration already, uh, you'll actually get a message, something like this, uh, when you click next. And you'll have to browse and browse it towards wherever you have your Tomcat installation. So in my case, I have my installation inside of documents or it was in documents at least yep here it is so inside my documents i have my tomcat tomcat um installation and this you can this is like the folder that you extract after downloading it so you just select folder and it will create a configuration for you. So in this case, I already have a configuration. So then you finish and then you'll see that your server has popped up over here in your servers tab. So next, what you need to do is you're going to right click on the server. You're going to start the server. So if there's no issues, the server will start without any issues. So let's just wait and just go to the console so you'll get the information over here server startup in this many milliseconds okay then what you need to do is you're gonna double click on the server and you'll see that under server locations you'll have multiple settings so just pick the setting which says use Tomcat installation. You'll see that the server path also changes to your installation directory. And you'll have your port numbers mentioned over here under ports. So it's letting you know that it's being hosted on port 8080. So you just do control S to save these settings. Otherwise uh, you won't be able to access uh, your server. So let's go to localhost 8080 and okay, I need to restart this. So let's just restart it. After making the changes, make sure to restart it. 
So, okay, there we go. So, you, so we have successfully installed Tomcat, and let's go and create an MT web application. And what you need to do for that is you go to new, you go to dynamic web project, and then you create a test project for yourself. <clears throat> so what you would want to do is that you would want to generate this web.xml and you would need this when you will be doing servlets but for JSP you might not need this. So this is our project. So over here under Java resources and under libraries, if you see the server runtime over here, then that's all well and good. But if you don't see it, then you should right click on your project. You should go to your build path and then configure build path. And then you would go click on class path and then you are going to add your library. So you go to add library, you add, you go and click on server runtime, and then you click next. And then you would select Apache Tomcat from there, and then you would click finish. So now I have two, so I'll just remove this. So we just need one. Okay, then you would apply and close. So what happens now is that you can access all the necessary classes that you will probably need for developing servlets and some other things. So let's just close this. Over here you will need to create a package. It can be called anything, so let's just call it test package. And in this package, you will have all your Java classes in case of servlets. But with JSP, you're not making Java classes, you're just adding directly to your web app folder. So under source, main, you'll find your web app folder. So anything that you need to add, so a CSS file, HTML file, JSP file, JavaScript file, you will add to your web app folder over here. And remember that web.xml file, it goes under web inf. Uh, we will need the web.xml when we are doing servlets. So let's just go and make an HTML file. So you can name it anything, so let's just name it index.html. So I'll use an existing example, so let's just go over here. And so over here we have a very simple form which has an input text and a submit button and it redirects us to a JSP page which is welcome.jsp. So let's just copy this. Actually I just copy this and add it over here. So okay so now we have a form over here which redirects us to welcome.jsp, but we don't have any welcome.jsp in our folder. So let's just go ahead and add a welcome.jsp in our folder. So make sure the um, capitalization and everything is the same as the name that you have mentioned, since it is case sensitive. Okay, so let's go finish this. So now you'll have a welcome page and it, it's empty. So what you need to do is, so let's just go over here and so this one is just be demo. So let me just copy it real quick. Okay. Okay, so what we're doing is that we're adding a scriptlet in here. So 
anything enclosed in these tags is, is called a scriptlet. And you're just adding normal Java code inside a scriptlet. And remember that request, out, response, all these things are your implicit objects that are provided to you. So you can use them directly without having to initialize them or anything. So let's just save this and let's just add it to our server so that we can run it. So <clears throat> you get right click on your server, you click add and you can add any of the projects that you can run on the server. But this is the project that I created so I'm going to add this to the server and I'm going to click finish. So once you've uh, published something onto the server you need to restart it. So let's just restart it. So if there's any issues with your code you'll probably get an error and it, the server will not start properly. So you'll know that there's something wrong with your code. Uh, but see, now that it started, it says that it started and it's synchronized. So let's just go over here. Now how to run this project. So you'll have to type your project name. In this case, the project name is test project. So localhost 8080, then you'll write test project. Um, then you'll have to write which file you want to go to. So in this case, uh, our landing page is index.html. So we would have to type index.html over here. Uh, you can type welcome.jsp over here as well, but it would have no input to display for you. So let's just do it and see what happens. See, so now you don't have any input for welcome.jsp because it's not being sent any data from anywhere. And that's why you get a null over here. So let's just go back to index.html and type our name over here. And once you've typed your name, you can click go. And now you're passing the value to this page, which is going to be displayed. And how you get that value is through this get parameter method. Well, that's the basics for how you are going to run it. So, but you can do way more things than just this uh, by using HTML, adding tables, and all that stuff. Uh, we'll be doing that in class. I'll be sharing with you these. Um, test projects that I have created and also all the whole XAMPP folder that you can run on your devices to access all the sample codes over there. Well, that would be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.